What I'm going to do here is do a brief explanation of the all or none principle again. So when we're starting off with the all or none, you first have to look at the components. So we have our typical cell, nerve cell, where we're gonna have our cell body and our dendrites. This is gonna be located up inside the spinal column. <clears throat> And then that's going to go down. And what that's going to do is you're going to have a cell, and depending on the muscle, it's going to attach what we say innervate a certain number of muscle fibers. Now these are your individual muscle fibers, of which there are millions and millions inside your body. So if we're just going to use your calf muscle for an example, your calf has the ability to produce a tremendous amount of force. <clears throat> when this nerve comes from your spinal column, travels down the axon, it will come down and it will attach to just a specific number of muscle fibers. In the typical human calf muscle, this one will go to about 1900. So one nerve to 1,900 different fibers. Nerve to fiber. Okay. This nerve going down to the fibers is what we call a motor unit. And that's the actual definition of a motor unit is the motor neuron and all of the nerve fibers that it innervates. So here we have three, and this is just an example. Like I said, inside the calf muscle, one nerve actually goes to about 1,900. But realize we also have probably about 1,000 nerves that run down to our calf muscle. The all or none principle is very simple. <clears throat> what it means is, is that when this nerve right here receives a high enough Im impulse, it will send a signal down the path to all of these fibers, every one that it touches. And if this impulse is high enough, it will turn on or activate all of those fibers at 100%, okay? So every single fiber that this touches activates at 100%. If it does not get a big enough threshold, it will deactivate or be inactive completely. And we will have a 0% response. So when this activates, it either activates all of them at 100% <clears throat> or does not activate them at all and we have a 0% response. So that is referred to as all or nothing. Okay? And that's the principle of all or nothing. The alpha motor neuron, the nerve, will come down, innervate the individual muscle fibers, and if it receives a big enough impulse, in what we call reaching threshold, and if it reaches threshold, it'll send a signal down and will turn these on all at 100%. There's no middle ground, okay? If this activates, this gets turned on 100%. If this, if this deactivates, it's at a 0%. We don't have any scenario where the individual muscle fibers themselves <clears throat> will only turn on to either 50%, 75%, 25%, something like that. It is all of a response or nothing. So the way that we grade force, okay, the amount of force I need to be able to jump versus walk that comes out of my calves is greatly different. I need much more force when I'm trying to jump from my calves than when I'm trying to walk. And so what our body does, remember I said we probably have about a thousand okay, motor units inside of our calf muscle. And since we are on all or none, okay, we can't just turn on these halfway, our body 
selects from this group of a thousand to figure out how much force we want to produce. If we need to produce maximum force, then our body will grab all 1,000 of those motor units. If our body only needs to produce a little bit of force, it may only grab about 10, 20, 30 of those motor units. And that's how we can grade force. So if we have 1,000 and we turn all of them on, we're gonna get a whole lot of force. But if we only turn on 100 of these, we're only gonna get one-tenth of that force, 10%, okay? So if we need 50% force production, total force production out of our calf, then we'll end up grabbing about 500 motor units. Motor unit, okay? Just using these numbers, this is not fixed numbers, okay? Across the human body, the number of motor units per muscle that we have. The bicep's gonna have a different number of motor units than the tricep, different than the quadriceps, different than your calf, all right? But in this scenario, if we needed 50% power out of our calf, then we're gonna get 500 motor units because they'll all turn on at 100% and then that's how we'll get our 50%, all right? If we only needed 10% force, then we would only have to turn on 100 motor units. So again, the all or none principle states that the nerve going to the fiber, okay, just the fiber, all right, these fibers, this is all called a motor unit. When this turns on, these turn on 100%, okay? Now, if we want to grade our force, it breaks down to how many of these nerves we turn on, and it relates to how many muscle fibers we have. So when these get turned on, they're turned on all the way to 100%, and when they're shut down, they're deactivated to 0%. And the way that we develop force within the body is we, our brain figures out how many of these we need to recruit in order to get to the right type of force production we need.